All right. Hey, gang. Welcome back. So there was a question of the possibility of how might I draw a building here in Illustrator. And so this demo is going to be a little bit free form. I don't have an official organizational structure to it. Mostly I would just show you in this instance how I would approach it if I had to draw this building for this proposal. And it's pretty, you know, it's actually not as complex as it may seem at first. A lot of it really relies on relying on your palette for both the alignment and pathfinder. Those tools come in really handy. Um, over in your actual toolbox, the rotate tool and reflect tool will often come in really handy here as well. So I'll sometimes drag those out on their own. The overall shapes group that's also in your tool palette. Sometimes, again, I'll slip over to that little right side bar and pop this menu out on its own because, again, I'll use that a lot. And then obviously layers palette comes in very handy. Pen tool we'll probably use periodically throughout this, but for a basic pre-setup, those would be the main functions I would have out and ready to roll. So layers palette, all the shapes pop out, the rotate reflect, and then your alignment and pathfinder palette, which I always tend to just group together. Transform I sometimes have in there, but for drawings like this, I won't use it as much, but I tend to group those three together. All right, so first up, you need a new artboard. And in an instance like this, regardless of what kind of document I'm putting it in, I'll usually at minimum do a tabloid sized artboard. And of course, um, because it's more building landscape, I'll probably keep it as a landscape oriented image. The usual CMYK, 300 PPI, if I know this is going to be print, if it's just going to stay on screen, then yeah, I might leave it as RGB, but that's up to you. In this instance, we're using print, so I'll switch to CMYK. So we'll hit OK, wait for the dramatic, dramatic buildup, Illustrator made the document. Um, right away, I tend to do Command R, just so I can see rulers on the top and left side edges of my window. Oh, one last step I would probably do in this to help keep it pretty quick and fast paced is as much as I hate to do it when I'm just drawing freeform, when I'm doing alignments such as this drawing would ask for, I would typically go ahead and turn on smart guides. And you'll find that under the view menu, almost near the bottom. For those that like quick keys, command U will get you to that. But just make sure there's a check mark next to smart guides. Because oftentimes as we're first executing some of the shapes, having them snap to alignment to each other on their own just by positioning them kind of makes things go a little faster. Okay, so we got that. So based on um, a walk yesterday, I did end up going and taking a picture of a building just as a sample to kind of play with. If you're in Creative Cloud, Adobe has finally, for Illustrator, given us a quick key option for placing images. Hooray! But if you're still in CS6 or 5.5 or earlier, there is no quick key for placing images, so you'll always have to go up to File, halfway down to Place, and I'll go ahead and just do that anyway. And then I know on my desktop I have the image from that walk of a relatively interesting building downtown. The, of course, I'm going to click on it, and it is unbelievably huge for what I need, so I'm just going to shift, click and drag to scale it down a little bit to fit my artboard. So I'll get that position in here. It is a pretty good size. Obviously, the scale of the building is a little bit warped to me because I'm not as tall as a building, so the roof line tapers a little bit away from me, and that's okay. I'm only using this as a loose reference. So what I would do with this place photo is in my layers palette, I would, well, right away I'd probably make a new layer, and on that new top layer I would make that for the actual drawing, and I'd go ahead and label the lower layer where I just placed the photo as, well, ta-da, photo. A nice thing you can do, sure, you can lock this layer um, right next to the eyeball icon so that I can never touch or move the photo, but that's not the whole part of what I want it to do. Illustrator offers this really great option that in the layers palette, if I just double click somewhere on the layer, not officially on the name, if I double click on the name, it makes me want to, or it gives me the option to actually change the name. But if I double click on the photo itself or on the right side of the bar next to the name, it'll bring me this little pop-up menu for layer options. Illustrator has this great little feature where I can switch it to a template layer. 
which essentially means it'll show the layer, it is locking everything, and it also gives me this great little option to dim any placed photography to a certain percentage. Its default is 50%, and you'll see if I hit OK, the photo and its entire layer has dimmed to 50%. It's still a little brighter than I'd like it to be, so I'm going to go back and double click one more time, drop it down even a little bit more towards 30%, and hit OK. There we go, a little bit better, and hopefully you'll be able to see the line work when we get to that here in a second. But you can tell when it makes a template layer, it automatically replaces the eyeball icon with this little screen type element, but it still toggles visibility on and off. And it too automatically locks itself. And yeah, you can still manually unlock that. The difference that it does when I'm making this template layer that, you know, I clicked and selected that option is that we're so very used to, okay, when we draw an illustrator, oops, click on the actual drawing layer, when we draw certain shapes and elements, we're looking at everything in a preview mode. So we're seeing colors, we're seeing shapes, that's great, huzzah, lots of good stuff. Um, but sometimes you want to uh, look at the elements in outline mode so you can see where things are going on. And that's always under the, out, um, the view menu. The very first thing is outline, or command Y. And command Y toggle, toggles back and forth between preview and outline mode. And so you can see, when I've switched to outline mode, I still see all those circular shapes that I just drew, but because that photo layer is a template layer, it does not convert to, you know, the infamous what we're used to with a placed photo in Illustrator that it too turns into an outline rectangle with a big X through it showing that this is a photo. I still want to be able to see the photo, but I still want to be able to toggle back and forth using command Y to see artwork or see outlines of the artwork for working details. That's the main function of template layer at that point. So, that being said, let's delete these fellas out of the way, get back to some regular drawing. So, I want to draw this building, and again, if you end up using a photo for reference to create a building on your own, don't feel that it has to be at exacting standards. We're not actually measuring anything out. We're just simply creating that impression of, here's the facade of the building, and then probably on an even more new top layer above this drawing layer that I've made, that's where I would start to implement my branding and signage and essence. I can still always, within this building, add different colors, maybe even mask um, materials, textures in it, like wood or tile, or glass, etc. Well, glass texture might be tricky, but it depends on the glass. So, drawing this building, knocking this thing out. I first would probably end up going through just, let's grab a pen tool, click an anchor point on one side, hold down the shift key, click the anchor point one more time, and this way I've given myself a baseline. This is the grounding element. I'm not going to show the building in perspective quite like this photo does. I just want perfect, straightforward elevation. But I need a grounding line for everything to exist on. The actual building itself, this is where... Um, the infamous smart guides come in really handy is that I'm probably going to try and just simplify the overall silhouette of the building break it down by breaking down its structure. Let me zoom back just a little bit more. So with the infamous rectangle tool and you know you'll see because I bring the mouse really close to that first baseline that I made the um, smart guides want to snap to it right away and that's great that's what I want it to do. So I can click hold drag out a rectangle, you know, a certain height of the building. And again, it's not aligning. Oops. Let's go ahead and default to just give it a black outline but no fill over here. After I get one uh, rectangle drawn in, I can go ahead and click on that object and duplicate it. And if you remember, I can hold down the option key, which changes my little arrow icon to a double arrow. Click and drag pulling up. Of course, I accidentally zoomed in. If I hold down the shift key, it keeps it on a parallel path to what the other previous rectangle has. And you'll notice I drag upwards until the bottom edge of my new rectangle snaps into position on the top edge of the previous rectangle. And when I'm done with that, I can zoom back and yeah, now this rectangle is too big, doesn't align to anything, but I can grab those middle sidebar anchor points, or not anchor, but uh, anchor points, but size adjustment nodes, and so there I've scaled that back down. 
Right now, of course, because I've scaled that, the line thickness changed compared to the other one. That's okay. We can always go back and fix this in a second. But for the moment, I just keep wanna I want to keep dragging rectangles up the side of the building. So holding down that option key and the shift key together, I drag up duplicate. And I kind of just keep developing little zones, and we'll go back for details in a little bit. But I want to capture little certain architectural details of the building, but maybe not the whole thing exactly verbatim. That's going to be up to you. Now I've drug out another one, and in this instance I'm going to scale this one way up towards the edge. But yet I still need a few more up there, so I'll probably back up for a second and drag one more. A little too tall, but we're going to come back and grab it. And in this instance, I can see on the photo, I've got one, two, three, four, yeah, sort of five, but I think I'm just going to put four um, stair-step levels of detail on this building. And I can just keep dragging those. They're all roughly the same size, one, two, three, and four. And then I've got this little shortened nub on the top. Yeah, we can go ahead and add that. What I'll do is I'll drag up one more rectangle on its side scale node. I'm going to make it a little bit taller like it is on the original building. One nice thing you can also do when scaling elements such as rectangles here in Illustrator is, okay, you have the actual anchor points that sit on the corner of each portion of this drawing, or this element, the rectangle, but we also have those scale nodes that happen at the exact middle of each of the sides. And so if I position my mouse over the left side uh, central scale point, you'll notice it changes into a little right-left arrow. And what that's telling me is if I click and drag now, I can drag left or right that side of the rectangle. But in order to speed things up, and I'm just going to Command-Z to undo this, to speed things up, I want it to scale in from both left and right sides simultaneously. And how I do that, again, I can position the mouse over it, hold down just the Option key, and now if I click and drag on the mouse, you'll notice both sides of this rectangle come in together at the same time, at the same rate. So I'm essentially creating centered rectangles really quickly. And there you start to see, okay, now we've got an actual building. At this point, I could go ahead and drag my selection arrow tool over everything, line-wise, and then go back and adjust my stroke line weight in the top options bar to one point. And now look, huzzah, everything is the exact same layer or layer, <laughs> everything's the exact same point size. For a moment I can turn off the visibility of the photo and you can see already a building is starting to take shape. So you can see how easy this starts to become. Okay, so we want to add a few details now to the building. Let's say we've got these little architectural rivets that add a nice little accent to the separation of main floor versus upper floors in this building. Again, really simple. What I would probably do, break out that rectangle tool thanks to the um, infamous smart guides that are still on. If I just position the cursor over that portion of one of the other rectangles, it's already snapping to an alignment. I might drag out a little rectangle, and I've got one detail already added. Just like we talked about the other day, I've got this new shape, and again I can create duplicates of it very quickly just by holding down first the option key to drag it. Better zoom in a little bit. I forgot here in the newer Illustrator, they offer these corner adjustment options, which I still have on at the moment. But So, I need to select probably easiest the middle of the whole actual shape. Hold down the Option key. And then as I start to drag, hold down the Shift key to keep it on a perfect parallel with the original. Drag a duplicate. I let go of the mouse. I let go of the keys on the keyboard entirely. And from now, I can just hit Command-D and it's going to keep duplicating that shape well across the whole building. Let me zoom back a second, command minus, so I can see just how far we got going here and scroll over just a little bit on the mouse. But I can keep hitting command D again, and you can see it's starting to just repeat those all the way across. Actually, you can just hit command D and hold it, and it'll keep adding details all day long. Okay, so as it turns out, I went a little wide and that's okay. What I might do here is actually go ahead and delete this last one. And again, thanks to Smart Guides, I can click and drag this last current one over to the side until it snap aligns to the edge of the building. 
zoom back a little bit again. Now I can drag a selection line across all those tiny little squares. And of course you can tell it also selected the rectangle, the big one beneath it. I don't need that one. So I'm just going to hold down shift, click on that to get rid of it. Now you can tell I've just got them selected. But they're kind of oddly spaced. I've got a big gap over here. This is where that alignment palette comes in real handy. So if you have this guy open, the very last row option has distribute spacing. And the first one is a vertical distribution. The second one is a horizontal distribution of space. And that's the one I want because these are all in a horizontal row and I want the space between all the blocks to be equal. So with all of these selected, I click this once. Boom. Perfect. They're all now evenly spaced. And that's just a heads up for you to know. Even though that command D duplication option is a great function, the more shapes you start to do that with in a row or a column, it does start to actually lose its true spacing. So ha doing this habit of correcting the spacing after you've created everything is a good habit to have with this. Um, all right, so let's create some windows real quick. One thing that's nice about most buildings is, well, hey, some shapes tend to repeat. So as you can tell, these four windows at the floor ground level um, are kind of repetitive. They are the exact same silhouette overall, mainly a vertical, a half arch at the top, a little light fixture in the top middle, but overall their detail silhouette, yeah, sure there's different curtains on the opposite sides, but we're not worried about the interior at this moment, this is only exterior. So at this point, same thing, I would start to, just like the building, let's go ahead and grab our rectangle tool, start at the base ground line of the entire building, drag a little rectangle, approximate width, again, doesn't have to be perfect, and then option shift, drag, additional rectangles to cover the new distance. And the reason why I start to break it down a lot more in these individual shapes, instead of just, okay, I could draw one big rectangle, use the pen tool, add the arch, and make this one entire shape, depending on how I want to add color or textures to this building later, it's a lot easier when all these are individual shapes. And it's vector artwork, it's very basic, you know, four anchor point vector artwork, so we're not making a really huge file at this point. So, as we continue on here, oops, only one rectangle, please. I can scale these down to be a little more proportionate. Um, the nice thing here, and actually I'll go ahead and switch to that outline mode for a second. And of course it may be a little harder to see the lines at the moment. But again, thanks to Smart Guides being on, I can switch to the ellipse tool to make circles, position that cursor over one side of the rectangle, click and shift drag to make a circle that's the same width as the rectangles and you have to kind of help keep positioning your cursor over that next spot you want it to snap to. Um, but I only need half arches so as I'm creating this artwork just so we can see it better I'll go ahead and use the lighter arrow, the direct select arrow click on the bottom anchor of this circle so I have it selected, you notice it's a solid red versus the other anchor points which are kind of the red with the white center. That means I've got this selected. While it's selected, I hit the delete key on the keyboard. I've gotten rid of that, but I still want to connect this shape back to normal in case I want to fill it with stuff. So let's break out the pen tool. I'll click on this anchor point on the left side, hold down the shift key and click on the anchor point on the other, and boom, now my circle is a half circle. And I can scoot this guy, clicking and dragging with the shift key up to the top of that rectangle. Smart guides are snapping it in place. And yeah, we've scaled, so all these line works are changing on these shapes. I can drag a selection across all of them, go up to my stroke weights, change it to one point so it's all unified. So we're getting lots of pieces here. Oops, I'm just checking it. It looked a little thicker still, so I just realized that the half circle isn't quite touching the other rectangle. So I'm just fixing that. There we go. And likewise, you know, there, if we notice in the photo, there's some original little accent lines of here's a vertical divider and two 45 degree dividers in those arch windows. I might want to keep that detail. It's a nice little simple addition. So what I would probably do here again, I would break out the pen tool. I wouldn't draw directly on the circle because it likes to try and add an actual shape. It tries to merge sometimes. So you may notice if I click on this, oh, it is going to be good today. It's a good illustrator day. I can click to align to that because of smart guides. 
hold down the shift key, get to the same baseline of the half circle, click again, and now I've got one vertical line. But I want to add, the, of course, the, the 45 degree ones. I could flat out continue the same line if I re-click that last anchor I just made. I can hold down the shift key for 45 degrees, click it here, and now I've added a, a line to that side. I have noticed with the newer Illustrator, for some odd reason, if I click the pen tool and make one line and click again, it keeps wanting to make lines right away. It doesn't want to stop. <laughs> I don't know why they did this, but it's there. If you did want to stop making a shape like this at any point, hold down the command key real quick and then click once more. What that did was temporarily switch your pen tool back to the arrow selection tool, and then if you click on your trackpad or mouse, you've now released yourself from drawing the shape anymore. But notice I still have my pen tool. The, the original tool still defaults back to where we just started, so my pen tool is back. I can start to draw another shape again. And then again, hold down the command key, click once away from the shape, and it's released, and I can continue drawing. So just a habit of, even though I may be doing that rule in quick key format, that that is actually me stopping it from drawing anymore. So for the moment, um, let's go ahead and go back. Thanks to the smart guides again, I can position my pen tool over that most recent anchor down here. Click once, hold down shift key for 45 degree line, create again, click one more time, and there we've got a bunch of details added to the window very quickly. Um, at this point, yeah, you'll probably notice in your drawings that because this vertical line and that 45 degree are connected, being that it's a sharp angle, it tends to add this little extension point going beyond where you want it to. And if you have your line, or I mean lines, <laughs> stroke palette handy, because this is such a sharp corner, Illustrator want, by default wants to add a little extra to the angle. But I don't want this little nub to be here, it's kind of distracting. So what I can do at this point, go back to my arrow tool, select this line, and within the lines palette, you'll notice there's a cornering option where I can round out the corners. And by clicking from the normal um, sharp corner by default into a rounded corner, that helped alleviate that issue right away. Now I don't see that nub. It's gone. Hooray! It's starting to look like a real building. Wow! Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot you can play with here. If you wanted to actually go ahead and start, you know, and I just did a command A for selecting all of the line work on this layer. Um, and I'm going to deselect that baseline. If you want to do a command A to select all and actually see what the building starts to look like, you can switch back to the default fill and stroke of the white fill, black stroke, and you can start to see how the building forms right in front of your eyes. It's like magic. So, we've got this window. Um, I do, I guess, on this round, just so we can see what happens, decide that I want to go ahead and include that little light fixture doesn't bother me. I'll probably create a simplified version of it. It doesn't have to be quite so detailed. Um, but it's easier to see on this window, so for the moment I'll grab the ellipse tool, kind of loosely position it in the middle. I'll probably leave it more as an oval shape. I'd like to go ahead and draw a little cap of a shape on top of it too, as well as underneath, to show that it's framed. And as we start to look at that, you know, it it's not too bad, but it's it's a little janky. You know, remember we're still in elevation. We're trying to show an elevation, so we don't want to show too much of a top perspective or a bottom. So I may actually go ahead and grab certain anchor points and just create them more to have that appearance of full front perspective view. I can add little accents and I'll. And I remember it's just Command Y that I keep toggling back and forth to see both photo and artwork versus photo and just the line work itself, the base vector work, like what you see right here. And uh, Switch to a rectangle, we'll add a little bit here. And if it's not totally centered right at the moment, don't worry, because again, what we can do, even with these little nubs, is I can drag the selection tool over all of these shapes that are constituting the light, and then through the align palette in these top rows, because I have all these shapes selected, I could tell it to align everything on the left side. So it for, kind of does this force left justification of all the shapes. Or I can tell it to align in the center. And now everything is perfectly centered in that group. Let me switch back to this mode so you can see it better. 
So again, I could do a left justified kind of alignment of objects. I can do a centered. I can do a right justified. But this tool, um, I could do vertical top, but I kind of have to undo that. You notice it pulls all the shape up to the top in a mess, but I don't want that, so I need to get everything back towards the center. Light fixture created. And again, you know, we can always zoom in a little bit more and with our direct select arrow even make little adjustments where maybe I want the base element detail of this lamp to taper in a little bit and likewise with the top so it's not quite so standard in its position again it's not perfect the real messaging here is that we're here to kind of create this structure to create a presence but it doesn't necessarily have to be technologically exact well, technologically or um, detail schematic exact. So, real quick for the moment, I'm going to drag a selection across these and hit Command G to group the light because I want to keep it all together as one unit. I'll go ahead and move it over here. And I might actually scale it up a little bit. I think it feels a little too small. And that's okay because we can fix it. I actually end up aligning a little bit to the detail elements in the window. And again, I scaled it, so of course it changed size on the stroke weight. I'll do a quick selection of everything again. Keep going back to one. And now I've got essentially this window put together. Oh, one other trick I might do, again, kind of referencing our building. The window is fairly flush, but there's actually a window frame around it. I'm not going to duplicate exactly like their frame is. But what I can do is let's go ahead and select this middle rectangle. I'm going to do Command C for copy or if you need the menu, it's underneath Edit, Copy. And then I'm going to paste this in front of itself, which F for front, I can hit Command F, and now I've pasted the rectangle exactly, in, a new rectangle instance, exactly in front of itself. And again, I can hold down that Option key and the Shift key to proportionally scale the new rectangle a little bit inside the other one. And I'm pretty happy with the thickness of the frame on the left and right, but obviously when I'm doing this proportionately, it leaves a wider frame on the top and bottom. So how do I do that where I can just scale the top and bottom? Just like we did before, you know, remember if I hold down that option key and grab either the bottom central scale anchor here or the top, as long as I grab one or the other, it's going to simultaneously scale it up and down. So hold down the option key, click, hold, and drag, and you'll notice that rectangle is changing on both the top and bottom edge at the same time. And here's where now I can kind of even out the framework around this bottom and top edge to match the left and right. And boom, there's a pretty decent window if I do say so myself, and I'm being very modest today. So I've got this window in place. Again, to make it convenient to keep arranging things on this building, I'll drag a selection across just that, but I'll have to deselect this rectangle and the ground line so there we go. I've got all the elements here. Command G for group. And again, now I can hold down Option key and the Shift key and drag another instance of it right next to itself. Likewise, you know, I know from the original image, Command Y toggling, there was two more of these on the opposite side. So what I might do here in this instance is let's go ahead, Shift click to select both of these, group them one more time and option shift click and drag oops try again option to start duplicating it holding down shift to drag it parallel across the baseline and I'll drag another instance over here and sometimes just to make sure I keep things even on both sides I might click one group click the big background rectangle of this lower floor and do a left alignment and then deselect everything reselect just those windows and I might using just the arrow keys and the shift key on the keyboard if I click the arrow keys just by themselves the objects move over one little step at a time but I'm gonna put them back on that edge but if I hold down the shift key it goes ten times that unit so holding down shift clicking on the right arrow one two three times now I see these windows are that far in from that side of the building I can repeat the process with these windows and again the rectangle 
I'm going to right align them so they're starting at that same edge on that side. Click, hold down the shift key, and click the left arrow three times, just like the opposite of what I did over on the other. One, two, three. And so now all these windows are sitting exactly proportionate from left to right side on the building. And of course, if we go back and look, we've got a much bigger arch that happens here in the middle. What I might do for that instance, and let me get some stuff out of the way here, is as we come in, and hopefully you can see these finite details, I'll click one of these, well, because they're all still grouped, I can click on one, hit Command Shift G to ungroup the pair. Now I can click on just one of them because it's still grouped. At it. You know, you can keep grouping items on top of grouped items on top of grouped items, sort of like Inception level. You know, it can keep going as deep as you want it to, but when you try to release them, remember that there's still sub groupings that are happening, and that's fine because in this instance I needed this whole window. I've got it selected. Hold down the Option to drag a copy, Shift to keep it parallel drag a copy and then of course I need to release and get rid of some of these pieces so command shift G to ungroup this group I don't need the light fixture so I'll click on that delete it and so I can see what my structure looks like back here on the doors in order to change this one yeah I don't need these little details in the arch window so I'm gonna just uh, use the direct select arrow drag across those three hit delete once on the keyboard that deletes the lines, but if you notice, the anchor points are still there, so I have to hit delete key one more time. So I got rid of them entirely. At this point, I don't necessarily need the window, but I think I'm going to leave it here just for now, um, so we have it as a reference point. Here again, uh, what we can do, and actually, what I may do at this point is drag a selection on what's left. Oops, hold that thought, bear with me. I'll switch to this mode so you can see what I'm doing. Um, actually, what I'm going to do real quick, just so I quit selecting it for the moment, the lowest big rectangle that I first made, I've selected it. If I hit Command 2, the numeral 2, it actually locks that rectangle for a moment, so I can't select it at the, mo the moment, which helps me because everything's filled with white, and every time I click, it selects things. Likewise with the little ground line, Command 2 takes care of that. But just to show you what I'm about to do here to make it easier, now that that's all locked and I can't select the first floor, I want to play with just this window element here. So I've got these shapes. Let me scoot them over just a little bit. Drag a duplicate again of just this shape. And let's go ahead and clean things up just a little bit. I need to simplify and reduce the number of some objects. So what I'm going to do here, dropping this piece right at that moment, um, I want to combine this arch to be one bigger arch, but still keep the same curves on, you know, to match the rest of the windows that are still here. So in this instance, I've got my direct select arrow, the, the lighter colored arrow. I'll just drag across this corner line, that path that's right there, hit the delete key, and you'll notice it got rid of all that, uh, but it still has the three anchor points. What I also will do is just mirror that same object activity on this side. I'll drag across this path hit the delete key, got rid of that, but I want to go ahead and reconnect these shapes. So what I can do is now switch over to the pin tool, click on that anchor point that's left here, hold down the shift key, click on the anchor point over there, and now I've actually unified this whole shape by reconnecting the remaining anchor points. Easy peasy. So I can look at this in comparison to the original archway. Uh, I could probably go just a little bit wider, so what I may do, just so I can keep moving things in the perfect aligned fashion, is with direct select arrow, drag my selection tool only across the objects on the right side, including just the right side anchor points of this top shape. And now pull it over to the side, make it a little wider so the doors look a little bit more believable. I don't want the main doors to be too skinny. Um, likewise, I'd probably select the right side of this middle bar accent element and click and hold the shift key to drag that over till it snaps to the right side. So now you can see I'm creating that archway pretty quickly while just using the shapes that I already made from the previous windows. The best thing about when you're creating a building even from a reference point or even just making one up is knowing that repetition happens a lot. 
So although I probably won't do it for this demo, if I were to draw the windows on this top structure, you'll notice the left side column is the exact same silhouette as the right. So I only really have to draw one instance of these windows and then Option Shift drag the, all that drawing over to get the right side right away. You know, keep it simple, keep it moving fast as you can. I'm going a little slow here because I want to make sure you see what I'm doing. But as I keep toggling back and forth with the Command Y key, now of course I need to add some doors. But there's still a window on top of that, so you know, let's go ahead and add some more rectangles. And I'm going to switch so I can see alignment. And thanks again to Smart Guides, it's allowing my cursor to just snap into play with the other existing shapes. I can click and drag another rectangle that matches the width. Again, not necessarily perfect, that's okay. Um, another window is actually being captured here, so I might select this rectangle. Again, copy, Command C, paste it in front, Command F. Use the Shift and Option key together to scale it in a centered manner until I get part of the margins in a place where I'm happy with. Actually, what I'll probably do is shrink it even more because I want it to align to the same height that these frames are on the left and right. And then using that option on the left or right side adjustment anchors, scale the window out just a little bit more. So hopefully you can see that. That's what's going on there. I'll even undo this just a little bit so you can see the steps. So it's pasted on itself, holding down Option and Shift together to have it scale towards the center point. But I want it to align, oops, let me do it from the top edge. That way it, it, the cursor is acknowledging this alignment. It's always important to keep on the same side alignment-wise. I've got that. Hold down just the Option key by itself with one of the side anchors. Scale it out. And you can see the windows coming together really nicely. Same thing one more time with one of the doors. Um, I will go ahead and create one of these guys. And actually what's probably going to work out really well if you notice, when I drag the door shape, as long as I'm in pretty good conjunction with... Well, we're going to see if this works. With the smart guides, um, it's showing me what the middle center point is going to be. So I may only have to create this door once. And again, I'll scale it to be a full-size door. It'll snap to the baseline of the building. Again, I can copy Command F, I'm Command C to copy, Command F to paste in front. We scale the door window a little bit. Rescale it proportionally some. You might even at this point, um, if you want, use a rounded rectangle from this guy up here and you could go ahead and draw one of the door handles on the outside right away. Why not? So we've got this door handle now drawn onto it. And again, it might be nice to go ahead and reselect everything. Change it to a thinner stroke weight. Drag just over those three shapes. Hold down the Option and then the Shift key. Oh, so we did end up a little bit wider. And that's okay. So what I want this to do is, it's the new door that I'm dragging, I want its left side to snap to the right side of the previous door that I just made over here. So I'll do Command Y, let's make sure we align to that. I'm going to zoom in a whole lot. And then, while it's still selected, drag and hold down Shift key to make it snap to the other door. Let me zoom back in a second. And of course, it doesn't do me any good to have the door handle on that side, so while it's selected, here's where that handy dandy reflect tool that's here with the rotate comes in handy. I'll just click, double click on the reflect tool. A little pop-up menu will come up. I don't want it to reflect on a horizontal axis. I want it to reflect on a vertical. So I'll hit vertical, hit OK. And now you notice the only thing that really had to flip over was the, the door handle. So we're good. But you notice both of our doors together are still wider than the original frame. Not the end of the world. We're OK. We're going to make this. We're going to make it. So deselect for a moment, and then select both door and all their shapes for a moment. And let's just go ahead and scale together as a group from the right side. You know, I might go a little shorter first, just so I can see the door edge, and then bring it back towards that other door edge until it snaps onto the alignment. And now, boom, all the doors are perfectly in place. And great, now we can see the building starting to come to life. We're seeing the actual structure. All is good. 
not very hard to deal with as you can see not where anywhere near as bad and again because all these are elements that you know and I guess I'll hit command option 2 to unlock everything on this layer but what's great is yeah I can very easily because all these are actual shapes I can start to add actual color maybe I do want to go ahead and color all the lights you know go ahead and bring in a yellow tone to them right away let's see what happens but it becomes very easy to add shapes, to add silhouettes. You know, even if we kind of compare to the old building, I could eye drop that color off the photo, and instantly it's being applied to the building. But notice I did have that rectangle selected first. So let me undo that real quick, just so you can see what I was talking about. So I've used the arrow key, I clicked on this rectangle, the big one is selected. This is another good benefit of the template layer option for the photo. When I do Command Y to toggle to the outline view of the artwork, notice my big rectangle is still selected. I can switch to the eye drop tool, I drop that color of the building, and if I do Command Y to toggle back to preview mode, you'll see it automatically applied that color to the rectangle. But of course, it did take out the outline, so just pay attention that those are gone. And that's fine, you might be able to just define things with just shapes of color. It's possible you might go ahead and put a black outline back on it and that's okay um, it is totally within your realm oops, I don't know how I didn't select that, hold on uh, color go, there we go so yeah, adding a thin outline back to it and so you can start to add color and shapes, you could mask photo textures into it if you wanted to, that's an option um, lots of ways you can play with stuff um, another thing you might still do, sorry I'm just going to undo a little bit for a second just so we can keep seeing what's going on. This building had a really great detail, some uh, little extra weight at the bottom with these accent um, plaster. So you know I may want to add some of those and that's totally fine, you can do that. Again, pretty easy to do it. We've got the rectangle tool, we're drawing on our actual drawing layer, you might scale out this piece really quick and again just let it snap to the other architectural elements that are there the alignment doesn't have to be perfect but we'll drag a copy of that above itself and then shrink it vertically and again we'll select them both readjust the stroke weight to get it to be universal I'll use that direct select arrow tool to click the top corner anchor and then just use the arrow tool on the keyboard, a couple clicks, brings that left side in, click here, a couple clicks, oh, yep, hey, mm -hmm. interrupted. Um, so we got that. The, um, they're together at this point. And again, that same issue where I'm getting a little extra nubs, I would change the cornering to um, rounded. And so we get that. And now you can see extra details start to take place. On this structure, I would click both those pieces, Command G to group, and then even, you know, I can create duplicates really easy and always rescale them to match more of the architecture they're trying to cover. It's those little details that start to create a really nice alignment and help your illustration gain just a little bit of believability. Would you have to necessarily get every single piece from your original photo into your drawing? Eh, not necessarily. And in this instance, you're noticing I'm dragging all three. I'll do a quick reflection on vertical, because I know it's the opposite side of the building. And then realign these guys to be right there. And yeah, check that out. That first floor is shaped up really nicely, and that's about as much detail as I probably want to add at this level. Um, yeah, there may be, you can see on that center arch, a couple other support pillars within that window. Yeah, easy enough to add if you wanted to bring those in. Break out that rectangle tool, let it snap to alignment. Its structure kind of aligns to one of the window frames down here. Let me zoom in a little bit and duplicate that one. So I get it to realign to that over here. And again, simple details. Done. That first floor is finished. Yeah, we need a little bit more. But as mentioned, in your layers palette, once you get the drawing in place, maybe you don't necessarily have color, but you can go ahead and lock that layer. I'd make a new layer, and this is where I would start playing with your branding. 
um, or actual add-ons that you're doing for the branding itself. The um, there still may be some involvement with the main drawing, and that's fine. Oh, a last little sidebar: if you really are interested and want to, for reference, again, you could add a person for a reference or a silhouette-like shape of a person. So even if we took uh, this young woman right here and went ahead, real quick, I'm just going to switch to outline mode. You know, draw her, add her in. Let's go ahead and create just some circles for her shoulders. We're going to end up turning her into a football player at this rate. Add a little rectangle. And again, a lot of this goes really fast because I'm allowing um, the smart guides option that's still here to remain on. And it lets my shapes align to each other really quickly. So I can easily start dragging leg shapes, arm shapes, adding rounded edges to them by simply you know, adding circles, dragging them into position so the center of the circle aligns to the edge of the, the leg stump that I'm creating. Drag a duplicate to have it align to the body shape. And you can start to see how you might create any sort of silhouette really quickly. Actually, those are going to be too wide for the arm, so hold on real quick. Let me draw an arm for this real quick. Same thing, I'll just recreate, redrag an option instance of the circle. Ah, too far away. That's kind of the good and bad of the smart guides, is sometimes there's too many guides and they get in the way. But here I've got the arm, I don't want to keep it necessarily right to the rigid soldier side, so I can select just the arm portion and the hand. And then with the rotate tool, if I click on that once, and then tell it to, instead of rotate from the center, if I click once here at the center of the shoulder circle, now you can see it's changed the rotating element right there. So now if I click and drag, you realize it rotates from that edge instead of the middle. And so now I can have a quick figure form that does this. Drag, Option, Shift to create another instance. Use the Reflect tool for vertical. Bring that back towards the body in this other circle, just so we can see it align. And huzzah, you can start to see a very disjointed person. But I'm just going to simply change all this to a black fill with no outline. Command G to group it all. And now I've got a rough instance of a figure form. I can get it to sit on that ground line next to the building. And yeah, it looks like this figure would fit through the door just fine, so we're still at a good ratio height. I can turn off the visibility of the photo layer. And here we go, we start to see this space right away. Um, one other quick last detail I'd want to give you is, okay, let's say you've gone and started to add signage to it, but you also decided to show that, hey, I've got uh, a post-mounted sign that sticks out flush from the building at some portion. Um, let's say this is it, and you went ahead and drug this guy out. Let me add another rectangle so we can see it. So when we're looking at the front elevation, all we see is this. It may be over towards one edge of the building, and that's fine. And then you've got your other main sign, let's just say for kicks, that it's some big, really garish thing. Not that I recommend it, but this is your main ID sign. That's outward facing, we see this as your brand, but then you have these post signs that actually maybe, who knows, maybe you put up two if it's a really big building, you decide you want two of them. What you may also want to do for your drawing then is to go ahead and let me actually unlock the drawing layer. Let's extend the ground line a little bit. And this is where you could show a side view of the building. What I would simply do is in a very curious way, let's go ahead and drag a copy of everything that's critical for the moment. And I know this is kind of hard to explain, but what it is, is I need these pieces and they give me a little bit of sense of accent elements that are on the building. Those little rivets that I put on earlier, the actual facade. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to drag a full portion of these over. And I want to be able to show that, oh, 
this actual middle rectangle, ah, if I can get close enough to see it, comes out a little bit. So I want some of the other rectangles to scale back to give us some dimension. But the building itself is not perfectly flush with everything that's going on. Like it's not a flat building. And again, thanks to smart guides, I can still have things align really quick. And so you start to get this immediate sense that not everything in this building is flat. There's actually some dimension going on. And this is where it gives us a chance to see how these post signs that are mounted perpendicular to the front facades look. And by dragging a group of this just to the side while holding the shift key, oops, I need both the circle and the rectangle. This helps give me a, gives me a position of where things sit. Even the little detail elements like that front grounding artwork. Ah, come on. And I'm just shift clicking and dragging to keep everything parallel. But I'm getting a sense right away of what's going on with this building. I need that little rivet to come over here with me. That might change some things up too. Yeah, it's a little tiny, so I have to keep zooming in even more. Actually, silly me. Shift and the arrow key to help move it along. Come on, little guy. There we are. So even those little rivets, we can have those detailed in there. I might change their scale. They may not be perfectly square from the side. I'm deciding they're a little taller. So you can see right away that I'm creating this side view of the front of the building. It may turn out that I can select just the right side anchor points of this footer base architectural element and have it right align. Oops, selected everything. Not everything. There we go. Just those shapes right align them to be flush. Drag them to match the side. Ah. Sorry too far away it makes it difficult to work with. There we go. So essentially we're seeing side view of the building now. You get an immediate sense that all these, what looks so flat from the front view, actually have this nice staggered dimension to them. And now is the chance where, again, I can bring another copy of the little figure form over to the right so I get a sense of this person in front of the building. And then, because I know the proportions of the sign that I stuck out front, I might go ahead and show this, and actually what I'm going to do is, I, you know, you saw I created this with a circle on each end and a rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and select them all, and with the Pathfinder palette, do that first option of Unite. It merges all the shapes together, so now it is one singular shape. And let's just say for kicks, I've made a really unusual type of sign, maybe not quite so big. And again, I might merge them all together, but I'm showing how this sign, with the addition of a quick rectangle or two, is mounted flush to the building with a couple posts. So we can see what do these signs do from the side view. And then again, we have another opportunity for branding that happens on the front, but also in that thrust perpendicular type signage. Make sense? Hopefully so. So yeah, this is probably ending up being a really long video. Um, but at least it gives you some quick key options to really think about of how am I showing the front of the building, how do I show the side. Technically, in most schematic drawings of architectural layouts, when we show a side of a building, because we're not going the full length of how much the side of the building we actually see, because we don't always get to see that, but sometimes we do, some architects you'll sometimes see a little mark like this, where it almost looks like a little bit of a heartbeat kind of line. And what this is telling people that look at it, and sorry, at the moment I need to tell it to be a line and not a fill. And then I'm going to copy and paste it in front of itself. 
add some accent to it to give it some fill and cover some things up. Normally this is what you would see on the side and what this basically tells us is this architecture keeps going off to the right continually but it's all information that we don't need right now. We're just trying to use this element to show that we're seeing the facade, our focus is the environmental signage itself. So whether or not you use this actual detail element to block that off, that's up to you. I'm not going to require it, but at least this starts to give you a really quick structure and a sense of how can I draw a building really fast. I was going pretty slow, but as you can tell with just getting used to option shift and dragging shapes to duplicate them very quickly and then using tools like the alignment to distribute space um, helps create, create a very clean element very quickly or the command D to keep duplicating little shapes like these details and then using distribute spacing to clean it up so not very hard but we're just focused on basic shapes the building itself might not end up with too much color on it that's again up to you I know we talked about that for the freestanding buildings but you might find some elements out there that are inspiring so you can create a building of your style this is obviously a fairly period style building based on the lighting and the archways of windows that happen but if it was a repurposed structure you could still do some really great things to it and ragstock was one of those great examples downtown that you saw as well that does that so up to you have fun explore keep it simple and that way it allows more focus to happen on the essence elements that take place is there signs is there certain colors painted into the structure are there other elements that wrap into it somehow again metal glass plexiglass wood laser cutting all the good stuff and being able to show how artwork happens on the on any sort of signage elements but also in the windows themselves play have fun with it giving figures for relative size ratio is a great idea does it have to be the literal bathroom type figure here no, not necessarily. If you wanted to illustrate something a little more personable, you're welcome to do that too. But again, keep them simple. The people relationship element is there for reference, but it shouldn't distract or compete with everything else you're trying to show. The focus is the environmental design, not the people. So, good luck. Have fun. If you have other questions, let me know. And we will see you on the flip side. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.